Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. This is the Business Edition. These are recorded live Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern at Standard Time, if you want to catch the show live. And so, with that, let's go ahead and jump on into the corporatocracy news. First, uh, Trump TikTok ban saga gets stranger. Uh, now, 9 to 5 Max says, unlikely partner Walmart joining Microsoft bid. Uh, I'm sorry, 9 to 5 Mac, you must not follow the news. That's not unlikely at all. If you guys are unaware, Microsoft and Walmart are already teaming up to build one of the largest spy networks. Walk into a Walmart store, you're going to be spied on by Microsoft. Go figure that. They're working together basically to try and compete out with Amazon and Whole Foods and stuff like that. So I was not surprised to see Walmart joining the bid. Microsoft's like, eh, I don't know. I don't know, TikTok, maybe, maybe not. Walmart, like, I might, I might double down on that deal with you. And since they're already in a lot of business relationships to gather and harvest user data, acquiring something like TikTok would be a very positive thing for their plan. You know, all these people using TikTok going into Walmart, immediately feeding their data up to Microsoft. Man, this is, this is a match made in heaven. So anyway, um, Walmart says TikTok has integrated e-commerce and advertising capabilities in other markets as a clear benefit to creators and users in those markets. Retailer said in a statement, we believe the potential part relationship with TikTok USA in partnership with Microsoft could add this key functionality and provide Walmart with an important way to reach and serve omni-channel customers as well as grow our third-party marketplace and advertising business. We are confident that a Walmart and Microsoft partnership would meet both the expectations of U.S. TikTok users while satisfying concerns of U.S. government regulators. Because, you know, U.S. companies are really all about the integrity and the privacy. So anyway, um, so regarding this, this is just mostly an update on the TikTok Microsoft case. Walmart's throwing their hat in the ring and who knows that might actually turn into something. Now, another update, we mentioned this article, but it came in like at five o'clock right one of, uh, last Friday. So I didn't cover it in the actual news, although I did mention it. Apple was forcing WordPress to add uh, add paid features into the app in order to push a serious uh, update. And of course, Automatic, the forget the guy's name, but Automatic, who runs the place, who's just a, a lazy cuck, like, okay, Apple, whatever you say, um, is just compliant because that's the way that guy is. Um, and Apple came out, finally said, oh, we didn't realize that that might cause backlash when an open source app that doesn't do anything for payment is now going to be forced to do that. And because of backlash, they apologize for any confusion we have caused. So Apple's full statement from their uh, lying PR head, we believe the issue with the WordPress app has been resolved since the developer removed the display of their service payment options from the app. It is now a free standalone app and does not have to offer in-app purchases. We have informed the developer and apologized for any confusion. So let me read, the, read that part again, this sentence, second sentence. The developer removed the display of their in-server payment option for the app. It is now a free standalone app. Hey guys, this app has always been a free and standalone app. It has never done anything to accept money. So that's the PR guy, you know, lying. I can tell a PR guy's lying when his mouth is moving. And so, you know, there you go. So now you can get your updated WordPress app without having, um, uh, without Apple kind of interfering. That's exciting. Newer news, Chrome feature is creating an enormous load on global DNS root servers. This is interesting. Of course, DNS is where things are going out to check where the websites are, are supposed to go to. Well, what happens here is that Chrome and Chromium, uh, started with Chromium really, they kind of wanted to get a, a feel and say, hey, what's really going on here? Like, we want to find all of the people who are trying to produce malicious domains. And so it's taking any domain you queried and then running it through a dictionary algorithm of similar looking domain names and checking the DNS against all those as well. Uh, and basically keeping a lot of things. And basically it was causing this massive spike of traffic to any DNS servers it was using. So this is this is the average DNS calls. This is when the feature is introduced. This is what happened at DNS calls. <laughs> so yeah, so for all these DNS outages, maybe they were all caused by Google to begin with. Very interesting. Uh, but it was definitely neat to see what's going on. Um, so basically, yeah, they were 
they were randomly generating similar DNS queries to everything you were doing. Very interesting. They, of course, they build it and say, oh, we want to make sure you weren't going to, to uh, Pep's E with two I's and we redirect you back to Pep's E instead. Honestly, good to prevent some malware and accidentally landing on a malicious but similar website, but at the same token, yeah, maybe that's maybe that wasn't necessarily a good thing in retrospect, but eh, whatever that happens to be, right? <laughs> All right, before we finish in on the news, we do have a subscribe star channel up now. This is in addition to Patreon. I'm not going to get a uh, get rid of Patreon altogether, uh, but if you are interested in helping to support the channel, head on over to subscribe star. I know some of you guys are not a big fan of Patreon. Uh, these guys here should be a little bit better. We have the same uh, basic support levels, all the same things. So we're going to uh, normalizing this across all of my channels. So you can go ahead and jump in there. I just got it put up uh, earlier this week. And so we'll be starting to fill out content. Uh, if you want to jump onto the Thursday shows as a guest, uh, that's one of the channels that you can use to do that. So head on over. And we are at subscribestar.com slash switched to Linux. And that link will be in the description of the video. All right. So next, uh, Porsche, uh, Porsche has a subscription model. If you guys happen to want to pay like rent on a car or something, they have a subscription model to add a new tier and expands their services to Los Angeles. So for a low, low price of starting at $1,500 per month, you can actually get yourself a Porsche subscription. Um, and then of course you can do a multi-vehicle option. It starts at $2,100 per month. So some of these companies are closing down these subscription models because they really don't make a whole lot of sense. But you know, if you're a, you're the CEO of a company or something and you travel to the United States every, you know, every couple months, sure. Why not buy the subscription service? Your company pays for most of it anyway, and you get to drive around LA in a Porsche. Um, but anyway, that's a thing, not, not, not necessarily for the average crowd, but hey, why not if you want a Porsche without actually having to buy one? For a, a, a sleek $1,500 to $2,100 a month, you can rent yourself your own individual Porsche. Now, if you didn't catch the, uh, the privacy news section, we had the Fitbit starting to collect anything and everything, diagnoses, mental states, and all sorts of things. Fitbit, of course, is... Uh, being purchased by Google, who is owned by Alphabet. Well, Alphabet has a company called Verily, which has done some insurance stuff, mostly in the auto insurance field. <laughs> All that location data from Google using your maps helps out with that. But now they're actually getting into the health. Uh, they're getting into the health insurance market called Coefficient. So this is a based out of a company based in Zurich, Switzerland, and uh, it is a subsidiary called Coefficient Insurance Co. And uh, basically a Google owned insurance company that wants to get on into the trillion dollar insurance market. Of course, they won't be gathering any data from Fitbit and Google. Google promised. And if you believe that, I actually happen to have some oceanfront property in Montana that I would like to sell you. So please reach out to me and uh, we can wrap up that deal there. But uh, yeah, so so uh, Google's parent company, Alphabet, getting into health insurance. That in and of itself is a little on the terrifying side, is it not? All right. And on to our final story. Uh, HBO Max stops working on Linux. This has to do with Widevine DRM. So HBO Max cranks up Widevine DRM, leaving Linux users in the cold. I thought that uh, Linux could use Widevine. Maybe there's just different levels of it. But for those of you who use Linux and had HBO Max, and you found that all of a sudden you could not access it anymore, it's because they ramped up DRM. Now, you guys that are affected by this, you need to call HBO and say, you know what, HBO, um, I use Linux, so I'm gonna need, uh, I'm gonna need uh, to cancel my service. If you have any contracts or anything, they're null and void because you intentionally did something to cause my service to change. Unless you'd like to change that service back and allow me to continue using it because, hey, I'm not using Windows spyware or Mac spyware, um, I'm using Linux. 
and really that's the the what you should be doing. Don't roll over for these people, guys. Don't be like, oh, okay, I guess I'll switch back to my Windows computer for watching my movies. No, no, it's, don't do that. Don't do that. You just got to stop using the service. Um, sure, the Linux target group may not be that big of a deal, but you got to let them know that, hey, there are actually customers who do use Linux. So definitely uh, that's something to keep in mind. So there's the articles for today. Let me know your thoughts about those. Anything else? Follow along on the social media, particularly if you're not getting notifications and you would like to be. Uh, we are on Twitter. We are on Gab. We are on Minds. We are on Reddit. And we are on Mastodon. We are switched to Linux at Fostodon over on Mastodon. So have a look at those. Links for those are in the description down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash t-o-m-m or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy... Switching to Linux.